We do have with us Udo, Udoma Udo Udoma. <laughs> it can be sometimes a little yes. a bit of a mouthful. Um, who is the Minister of Budget and Planning? And you're welcome to Sunrise City, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Should we say you're the man of the moment right now, yourself and the Minister of Finance? A lot of people are looking to you to uh, get the economy out of recession. And only recently, uh, there was a budget retreat yesterday. Did we envisage, first of all, that we're going to be entering a recession? Uh, we started being concerned about it a little while ago, and we've been meeting at the economic management team. Uh, we've been meeting over the last month. A little on while this ago issue. was uh, is how long? Oh, at least the last month or so. You see, the reason we're in a recession, I think it's good to understand that. Um, it has to do firstly with the oil price. But the oil price alone would not have put us in a, in a recession. The oil price went down from $110 uh, dollars to about 30 um, in the first quarter. It's now gone up a bit to the 40s. But we had anticipated that in the budget we projected a price of $38. And with $38, we would have generated enough revenue and enough foreign currency to keep the economy uh, on a fairly even keel. And then next year, we start to grow. So we thought that the performance this year would be flat, then next year would start to grow. But what happened was that the 2.2 million barrels of crude oil, which we anticipated, we did not get. Because of militant activity, it dropped from 2.2 to at one point, 1.1. So half our revenue went. And that revenue was also the, uh, uh, the foreign exchange supply. Because foreign exchange supplies the whole economy. So when you lose the foreign exchange, you also lose your non-oil revenue. Because your non-oil revenue depends on the foreign exchange from oil. So essentially, when we were putting together the 2016 budget, it wasn't envisaged that we were going to be going into a recession. How would you or know? That, or we could be going into a recession. No, we thought it would be a flat performance, but not a recession. And the reason, and if we, had, if we didn't have the sudden drop in crude oil production, half from 2.2 million barrels to 1.1 million barrels, we would not be in a recession. The performance would be flat this year. It wouldn't be a stellar performance. It couldn't be a stellar performance this year because we came in with a, a low oil price and the growth of the economy tracks the oil price. In 19, uh, by the first quarter of uh, um, 2014, the economy, the GDP was 6.21% GDP growth rate. It has been, you can see the pattern, it has been tracking down as oil prices came down, it started going down. So the problem didn't start today. The problem started in, at the beginning of 2014 when it started going down. It went down such that in 2015, the uh, last administration could not even uh, uh, give more than 15% of the budget to capital because it had been going down. So it kept on going down and kept on going down. And when we came in, we knew we had a difficult situation. And we said so right at the beginning. Even in my address to the Senate on the budget, I told them 2016, tighten your belt, is going to be a tough year. We expected a very tough year. The figures but, but not were recession. clear, but not that we would go into a recession. All right, let, let me ask you, Minister, uh, yeah. because there are those who say, if you can hear me, that the fact that we were slow off the blocks with the budget contributed hugely to the challenge that we have today. To what extent has the 2016 budget been implemented? Now, the 2016 budget has been, as far as the recurrent, virtually fully implemented on the recurrent. Emoluments. The emoluments have been uh, paid in full. We've released all the money so that nobody, no federal, at the federal level, all salaries have been released. So we've met that in full. We've also met all debt service in full. We've met all that in full. Uh, with regards to overheads, we have not met that in full, but we're almost there. The problem has been capital. 
in the capital uh, budget, we and we projected we uh, plan to spend about 1.8 trillion on uh, the uh, the capital budget. We've only spent about 400 billion. So the capital budget has not been. Uh, we've not been able to beat up with the level of capital releases. And the reason for that is that if you look at the first half of the year, the first six months, just to use that, the performance, revenue performance was one trillion naira less than we projected. One trillion naira less than we projected. So given that rate, it means that at the end of the year will be two trillion naira less revenue than we expected. There is no economy, there is no this that could manage that without moving into where we are today. Let me, let me is, come in here, uh, uh, Mr. Odoma, quickly here. Uh, you just told us about the performance of the uh, capital budget. Now, could you put that in, in percentage so that people can better understand yeah. how much uh, we have implemented so far? Uh, well, uh, it's, it's a simple, uh, it's a 400 out of about 1.6, 1.7 billion that we expected. So you could say about uh, one quarter of the capital budget. And, uh, well, it's good yes. that you agree that we haven't done pretty yes, well in that, in that light. But then even the releases uh, don't get in straight away. Don't, don't get in straight away because of procurement processes which we have to uh, meet, we have to follow due process. But well, all the funds have been released to the MDAs. 400 billion has been released to the MDAs. How soon are we likely to see some kind of activities in all of that? Because so many analysts and some of the resource persons with you are the retreat are saying that we should pump a lot of money into the economy, into the system, and see some kind of uh, busy, busy activity happening. No, no, we completely agree with that. And that is why I said the economic management team has been meeting for the last month to see how we can raise additional revenues. We need to raise additional revenues. Because to release more money, you need to get the money first. So we have a fiscal stimulus plan, which we have been developing over the, the last month or so. Um, we intend to do a number of things. We're looking at asset sales, we're looking at concessioning. We're looking at uh, getting advance payments from uh, uh, licensing rounds and all that. We, we are targeting to raise between 10 to 15 billion US dollars. That is what we are targeting to raise. And we've started that process. Now, and why are we looking for dollars? It's because what need, we need to charge this economy is actually foreign currency. It's foreign currency shortage that is really responsible for where we are today. So we have to look for the foreign currency. So we, we have a, a, a plan already. We have prepared a, a, a bill because we want to fast track some of these processes in order to be able to get the money from the consensus concessioning and all that. I'm Let little, me give you an example. Uh, just a moment. Yes. I'm a little worried that you say that the economic management team has just been meeting over the last one month. Over the fiscal stimulus. Over the fiscal Because as of July, when you addressed the Senate, uh, it seemed that it was already a little clear that we were going into a recession. In fact, the Minister of Finance was a little more uh, categorical. She said, technically, we're, we're already in a recession yes. if we're to go by the definition. Yes. You were a little more reluctant to use that term. I, as far back as at that time, we already knew that things were not looking good I and was. it could be official. We were, we were, you see, there are two sources of getting additional funds. One is getting more production. At that time, we still thought we would be able to get more production, we would be able to get back to 2.2. We're looking at a strategy to contain the militant activity. We didn't expect it to be as prolonged as it has been. And we are still working on that. Because if we can contain the militant activity, we are discussing with them as well as looking at other strategies. If we can contain that, we can take the uh, immediately up to 2.2. If we achieve that, we will be able to pump this additional money into Where the Where are we economy. now? Are we still around 1.1? No, I think it's now moving up. Uh, because as of, I think, yesterday, 
uh, Quibo Terminal has started operating now. So we're now moving up. So we are, you know, working on trying to, we're working on all sort of, on all fronts at the same time. One is trying to get oil production back. It's very important. And then two is the asset sales, concessioning and all that. Let me give you an example of the things that we're looking at. The, we are, we're discussing, because these things take, 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 take a while to, to put together. We're discussing with General Electric, and I'll give that specific example. They would like to bring in $2 billion. They've already committed to bring in $2 billion into concessioning the Lagos Kano Rail and the uh, Port Harcourt, the, the existing Lagos Kano and the existing Port Harcourt Maduguri. They will take them over, revamp them, build coaches in here in Nigeria. But the process of getting the thing through is taking time. We have to go to the various government agencies, you know, because there are certain procedures you have to go through. So which is why we met and said, see, is there a way we can fast track some of these things? Because we need the money today, not in three months' time, not in four months' time. So consequently, we've looked at, one, looking at presidential directives that can be issued, you know, to fast track that, and two, taking a bill to, to the National Assembly so that we can, we can fast track some of the things. For instance, one of the things that is holding up the releases is the procurement. The procurement processes are slow. They involve ad advertising for a certain number of times, six weeks or so. We're trying to see how we can fast track them. But we're law abiding. We don't want to do anything except by due process and following the law.